Hello, good people of YouTube. Today I'm bringing you guys my top five power crept ships. So before we get into the list, off the bat, what is power creep? Well, for those of you that don't know, I'm assuming most of you guys have heard the term power creep before. But power creep means that a ship has, well, and it's not just a thing limited to what warships. This happens in just about any online game that is around for more than a couple of years because new things get added and the older weapons, vehicles, items, whatever, their effectiveness drops when the, when the devs keep introducing in newer items, weapons, vehicles, and all of that. And applying that to what warships, that means that older ships they lose what makes them special or their effectiveness goes down because of a new um, maybe class or gimmick or something like that. So basically it means that the ship is, well, that the ship effectively becomes weaker over time because of it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And most of the ships actually, yeah, all, all of these ships on the list are old ships. They're ships from two years ago. And we'll talk about what has power crept them and what kind of state they are they're in now and four out of the five of these you'll still see in game but nowhere near like you used to and then one of these honestly i haven't seen one of these ships in like i, I honestly can't remember the last time i saw one in game so anyway let's go ahead and get started oh and again this is in no particular order i'm not saying that five isn't so bad but one's the worst this is just my personal top five power crept ships, or at least the ones that I noticed the most. So let's go at number 5, and that is the tier 10 American battleship, the Montana. Of course, starting out with old ships, to start with one of the oldest battleships in the game. So the Montana is, well, one of the first tier 10s ever added into the game. Back in the day, it was just Montana and Yami having their beef uh, with each other, but, but now, of course, we have a whole host of tier 10 tech line and premium battleships. So... Obviously, this being one of the first battleships ever added into the game, it's been power crept a bit, and they have tried to bring her back a couple of times. They did lower her citadel along the Iowa uh, and Missouri citadel. Whew, that was, I think, a well over a year ago by now. And they did recently give Montana the improved American battleship heal that uh, from the Colorado on up the American tech line gets. Except for the Missouri. They haven't given the Missouri that hill yet for some reason. But all that did, of course, help her because before then she was just, whew, it was a rough time for Montana before she got those buffs. But still, nowadays, most of what made the Montana, the Montana, isn't really there anymore. Um, her AA, for example, back in the day, back in the time of RTS, well, not even the R, well, yeah, RTS uh, aircraft carriers. Montana was an absolute no-go zone. If you were an AA build Montana, the carrier would absolutely leave you alone unless you had, you know, half of your AA mounts broken or you were, like, the, one of the last ships left alive because they would lose most of their planes to the Montana's AA. And this is back when losing planes hurt a lot more than it does now. And so that kind of got replaced by the Conqueror. There's a video I did, but again, it is back in the RTS carrier's where I took the Montana and I took the Conqueror. I put like 12 Midways on the other side in the trading room. And the Conqueror and Midway, I mean, the Conqueror and Montana went back and forth, back and forth with who shot down the most planes and such. So, you know, Conqueror has effectively similar AA to Montana. And since then, we've had a couple of more tier 10 battleships that have comparable AA to the Montana. The Kremlin, when it first came out, it had God tier AA, and its AA is still good, but it's been nerfed several times, but, you know, Montana's no longer the queen of AA anymore. And, of course, her guns, 16-inch guns at tier 10. You know, 16-inch guns aren't small, but she does have 12 of them, but again, now we have several other battleships with 12, 16, and above inch guns at tier 10. Now, what the Montana does have going for that still does make her pretty special and why I suspect we still have a good bit of Montana players in battles is that her guns are very consistent. You don't get a lot of really wonky dispersion with the Montana, especially if you use the uh, special American battleship um, artillery plotting room mod 2. You get good consistent dispersion 
And, you know, you'll see some battleships, like the Yami is a really good example of this. She'll have, like, laser dispersion where the shells almost all <laughs> converge into one pixel sometimes. But then sometimes you get dispersion that makes the Roma look good in the Yami. You don't get that in Montana. You may get some slight variation on the normal American dispersion, but for the most part, it's consistent, which means that once you get used to it, you know where to aim, you have a good idea what your shells are going to do, so you can do pretty good. The low velocity of the American shells, that does make it more effective against uh, cruisers because shells aren't traveling very fast, you get less overpins because of it, and those two things are probably really what, in my opinion at least, is, what, is what's keeping Montana in the queues. If it wasn't for those two things, you would really have no reason to play Montana. So she still has that going for her now, but other things about her, her guns, her, um, well, the amount of guns and the caliber of guns, her AA, all that stuff, that's been, of course, overshown by other ships at Tier 10 now. All right, moving on to number four, we have the Tier 7 American battleship, the Colorado. Now, the Colorado wasn't that great when I first played through her back in the day, but, you know, for her slowness, her sluggish turrets, her, and again, her armor is actually pretty decent, but when you get up tiered, you know, that's not the best thing to have, ironically, because if your armor's decent at tier 7 you up to tier 9, you're just chunky at that point, which means tier 9 ships can just chunk the crap out of you for, like, 10, 12, 15k damage from just about any angle, it feels like. Um, slow. Her turrets traverse very slowly. Uh, her range is actually pretty decent. But her 16-inch guns, that, that was the main thing with the Colorado. She's a tier 7 battleship with 16-inch guns. And that was a huge plus back in the day. But now, <laughs> we have several other tier 7 battleships with 16-inch guns that are just outright better than the Colorado. For example, the Sinop, this is the best example of this as well. She has nine 16 inch guns, where the Colorado has eight 16 inch guns. Now, her, the Sinop, her guns do reload in about 33 seconds, but when you have nine of them with Soviet shell ballistics and all the fun stuff that comes with Soviet shell ballistics, it's really not that big of a deal that you may have a 33 second reload time. Oh, and the Sinop is tankier than the Colorado, and faster, and more maneuverable, and AA after the CV rework, what even is AA anymore, so that honestly doesn't really matter all that much, and I mean, it just it's just so much better than the Colorado, and the only reason I can imagine people play the Colorado nowadays is because they're grinding to the Montana, or up the American battleship line, and other than that, I mean, there's no real reason to keep the Colorado around anymore. And she's just so slow, too. 20 knots back in the day was rough. 20 knots nowadays, is, is it's ridiculous that Wargaming is still keeping Colorado limited to, to 20 knot top speed. And they haven't at least pushed up to like 24 knots or something. Because keep in mind, Colorado, a, a tier 7 battleship, can see the Georgia. A tier 9 battleship with, eight, with 18 inch guns and a top speed of 40 knots. That's one heck of a, of, of a gap between the two of them. And I know with matchmaking, you know, supposedly you're supposed to be top tiered more, but with tier 7, you're really more, more, um, more, coming, more so coming mid tier than top tier nowadays. So that's just rough for the Colorado too, because again, when you get to tier 8, you have a lot of fast battleships with 15, 16 inch guns. They get pinned through your bow and such. And yeah, you know, like I said, when the Colorado first came out, it was rough with the speed, but the guns made it worth it. But nowadays, you have several other options. Uh, Nelson's another one you can pick at uh, at tier seven. You have 300,000 300, free XP. It has good AP, uh, good HE. Well, fantastic HE because it's British, and it does have a low low hill where you can simply reprint the entire ship. And Colorado does have an improved hill, like I mentioned early, earlier. But again, when you're getting chunked for 15, 20k by pretty much anything with a 15 inch gun. Um, when you get up to here, it, it, it only helps so much. Okay, moving on to number three. We have the Tier 7 Premium American Light Cruiser, the Atlanta. Now, you may notice a trend here. The last three ships have been American ships. Before you go complaining that I'm an American doing American buys and stuff, just know that the American Lions is one of the oldest lines in the game, so naturally they are going to have more of these power crept ships. Alright, so the Atlanta. The Atlanta back in the day 
was one of the first, mm, you know, just bristling with guns, fast reload time, HE spammy cruisers. And if played right, Atlanta was pretty potent back in the day. And she kind of slowly has been, has been getting power creep with the change here, the change here to the overall game mechanics and, you know, the introduction of this light cruiser and that light cruiser and that light cruiser that kind of took away her dock in this. But she still, she, uh, she still was doing a pretty good job of hanging in there. Then the IFHE rework hit, and now Atlanta is just... I mean, you don't have much reason to play it anymore. Because... When the FHE re or rework hit that took away her pinning ability and you either had to take the pins or have a 3% chance of starting a fire if you did take IFHE now. So now the thing is just a complete, you're praying that you're starting a fire. Um, and she's still good at what she was designed for in real life and that is of course hunting down destroyers and dealing with other light cruisers because you know you can get within you know, six, seven kilometers of other light cruisers and load AP and, you know, pin away. But still, the traditional way of playing Atlanta has gone, and she's lost a lot of her power with that as well. And I was I was never the Atlanta player. I could never really get the hang of it. I probably would be a better Atlanta player today than, you know, back two years ago when I was originally trying to play the Atlanta. But with, you know, what's happened to her, it's kind of really not worth it, especially since it's a premium ship that you have to buy now. And... It's kind of rough when your premium ship gets nerfed by a world by a, a, a global change to a one captain skill, but that did happen, and we're stuck with the Atlanta that we have today. Okay, moving on to number two, we have the tier ten Soviet destroyer Kalbarovsk. And now you're looking on the screen and probably thinking, "Sea Lord, that's uh, that's not a Kalbarovsk. That's a Kalbar you're seeing." Yes, it is. Because um, I had a couple options for recording this segment. One, I could have free XP'd up to the Kabarovsk, which, if it was still the Kabarovsk of two years ago, yeah, I probably would. Uh, or two, I could just show you the main reason why the Kabarovsk isn't it. Like, this is the ship I was talking about earlier that I just I don't see this, this ship in game anymore. I really don't. And I play a lot. Not as much as some other players, but I play this game, you know, two, three, four hours a day depending upon, you know, what month it is. But, yes, the main reason for the Kabaros being power crept is the Kleber. Kleber does everything the Kabaros does, but better. And I'm not a destroyer main, but just from my personal experience, from being tortured by Kabaros back in the day, and then going to today where I think the last time I saw one was in the last ranked sprint season, someone brought their Kabaros. That was the arms race season. And I remember that because I thought, oh, it's a Kabarovsk. I haven't seen that thing in forever. And after, uh, but before spotting it then, I, I, I hadn't seen it in like months. So yeah, the Kleber and the French destroyers have really just outshone the Soviet gunboats. They do everything better. They're faster. Their guns are better. They get the... Um, the reload booster for their guns, so you can absolutely just melt anything that gets in your way, destroyer-wise at least, and you can melt anything else that gets in your way, um, cruiser-wise too, if you play it smartly. Now, the Kabarovsk, of course, does get a heal. Kleber doesn't get a heal, but it does get that special damage saturation that the French destroyers get, where they effectively take 50% less damage, so they have that going for them, which is a huge advantage. Even though you don't get a heal or a smoke screen, but still, still they're so fast. Their guns are nice. They get the reload booster. They get the engine booster to where they can go. I don't know Mach one or Mach two, whatever. It, it's ridiculous how much the Kabarovsk has, has just been outshone by these French destroyers. And again, I'm not a DD main, but uh, still, it's not rocket science to tell that you know the Kleber has effectively killed the Kabarovsk. So coming in at number one, we have the Tier Nine Tech Line. German Battleship FDG. So the FDG, when I went through the first time, she was pretty crap. And she has received several buffs since then, and that has helped her out, but still, she has been power crept pretty hard for a couple reasons. One is there's been some new classes and some new uh, weapons had into the game that are effectively good at dealing with battleships. 
And two, there's been a host of Tier 9 ships added that can do a pretty good job of, well, filling the role the FDG has, but doing it, but you know, better. Uh, for example, at Tier 9, we have the Alsace, the French battleship. Now, the Alsace has 12 15-inch guns. The FDG has 8 16-inch guns, either 4.6s or 4.20s. Now, they did give the 4.20s a reload buff uh, poof, like 3 or 4 months ago. But still, you only have 8 guns, and they're German guns, so they're not all that accurate, even with the recent buff to German dispersion. The Alsace, on the other hand, has 12 15-inch guns with French pins and French velocity, which means they're a bit easier to aim, and they pin quite a bit, and 12 15-inch guns do more damage than 8 uh, 16-inch guns. So there's that. Plus, the Alsace has arguably the same, if not better, secondaries than the FDG. And, of course, the FDG does have German secondaries with the German HE pins, so you could argue that they're but the Alsace has, well, French secondaries with French reload time and French range. And, I mean, yeah, against a battleship, the FTG is probably the better choice. But still, with the reload time on the French secondaries and getting them out to the same, if not further, range than the German secondaries, you know, French secondaries are pretty nasty as well. And not to mention, you also have the Georgia, which has been added with, with six 18-inch guns and... Uh, Massachusetts level of secondaries and again they don't have the pins that the Germans do but still they can get the job done pretty well and of course we've also had things add into the game like the Pan-Asian destroyers which are effectively much better at dealing with uh, battleships than other destroyers because of deep water torpedoes and deep water torpedoes they're stealthier they do more damage because they ignore torpedo protection and of course when you when you're when you're in the German ships after the uh, Bismarck, they're not that maneuverable anymore. The FDG and Kerr first, they're some of the largest ships in the game, so naturally they aren't maneuverable like the Bismarck or the Tirpitz or the Gneissen. Now, now, of course, they do get Hydro to kind of help with that, but still, you're only so maneuverable. And, of course, paying attention to where DDs are and stuff, that's going to help you out as well. And, of course, you also have things like AP bombs from a certain Tier 10 Japanese carrier that straight up just murder German battleships and several other things like uh, just the way the game has gone with the cranking up of HE spam of course FDG very large target and very large detection radius so you're naturally a first pick when ships want to farm damage be it with AP or HE either way so that of course has led to the FDG just being a better ship than it used to be but still when you start out where the FDG started out, and you get some buffs, but then, you know, the game changes to where, yeah, it's a better ship, but it's not that much of a better playing experience, if you guys get what I'm saying. It, it's probably around the same level of frustration, honestly, looking back at the FDG two years ago and, and the FDG today, because, yeah, the guns are more accurate, the guns hit harder, but still, it's kind of a misery to play through it, and again, even with all the buffs and such. So, that's my reasoning behind the FDG being on this list. So, let me know in the comments down below, guys. What are your top five choices for power crept ships? And there could have been a whole host of other ships that I could have uh, chosen from, but these are the five that I've noticed the most, and I could probably explain the best. Uh -huh, but let me know in the comments down below, what are your top five picks? If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. We're on the way to 15,000 subscribers. We are just over 11,600, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Anyway, guys, I hope you are having a wonderful Tuesday, staying safe and healthy during these times. Hope you enjoyed the video, and lastly, I hope to catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>